Hi everybody, this is a quick tutorial, tutorial to show you how to use your previously created template and also how to use viewports, how to add dimensions on the drawn and some annotation. So first of all we'll get started by using our previously created template. Click up here where it says new and I'll look for a template file. You'll see all these DWT files. You've saved the DWT previously, so you should have saved it to your own uh, folder. Mine's saved in here. A4 template. And you click open, and your template will open up for you to then start drawing on. It's a base for a drawing. Notice up here it says drawing3.dwg. You're not actually editing the template drawing at all. It's a base for drawing on. If I click down here on layout 1 and go into paper space, you can see the border is already sitting here on the piece of paper. You see it's slightly off. And the way to fix that is if you go into, sorry, right click on this tab, go into the page setup manager, go to modify, untick and retick hit OK and close. There you go, it centered it. So that's a handy little tip. Uh, your drawing will always be done in model space. So we move back to model space. The area we're in at the moment is layout one tab is known as paper space. This is your piece of paper and this is where everything gets printed out on. So if I go to the model and I'm going to paste in something I had um, let me see, had copied earlier on. So I go up here and paste. Paste that drawing I have created and zoom all. You'll see here I have a plan view, a front elevation, a end elevation, and a section through the building. In fact, I'll move this section from here just down to here. Not to be too exact. That will do rightly. So I have my drawing in model space. There's no annotation, there's no dimensions here. And how to take the drawing and put it onto a piece of paper? We use viewports. So first of all, move into paper space. Select the viewport layer that you should have created. And I'll just show you here. Whenever you've created the viewport layer, it shouldn't print off at the end of the day. There's this little icon here to show that it won't print. You can see it, but it won't print. How to use a viewport? You need a viewport toolbar. And there's a couple of ways of bringing it up. I'll use the ribbon method here. If you click on view, and over on the right hand side, you can access toolbars. I like to use the AutoCAD toolbar for this. Go down this list. Okay, go on until you see the one that says viewports. And there is the toolbar. So we'll keep that horizontal. Let's move it over here. <coughs> Back into the home ribbon. Anyway, the toolbar, you only really need to worry about two parts of this. This icon here, single viewport, will create a viewport. And what scale the viewport is at. So if I click on that, you then need to specify two corners or rectangles. So one here and one up there. And whatever has been created in the model view will then appear inside the viewport. You need to set the scale, you need to see what you're looking at in the viewport. So the way we do that, this down here tells you you're in paper space, you need to activate the viewport. So you click on this, it now says model here, and you'll notice the viewport has a thick boundary, and you can pan and zoom within this viewport. And this is what we need to do. We set what we need to look at, or want to look at, roughly in the center of the viewport, and then pick a scale from the drop-down menu. 1 to 100, I think will be good. Yep. And once the scale has been set, you then deactivate the viewport by clicking here. Now, I don't, the viewport's still active, but I don't want to see the grid, so I'm going to turn the grid off here. It will only affect this viewport and turn it back into paper space. So I've now got a view of 1 to 100. The viewport, by the way, you can, if it's too large or too small, 
you can click on the edge of it and you'll get the grips up here, appearing on each of the corners, the blue boxes. You can select one of those grips and move it in or out depending on your personal preference. Okay, skip out of that. I can actually move the viewport as well if I don't like where it is sitting on the page. Put it up here maybe. That's fine. I can create another viewport right beside it. And again, do exactly the same thing. Make the viewport active. And put what I want roughly in the center and then select the scale. I will try 1 to 50 for this. Too big. 1 to 100. Good scale. And deactivate. As I say, if the viewport is too big, you can simply make it bigger by selecting the edge and moving the grips along. So we're happy with the size of the viewport. And then you can see it's overlapping here. I can then move this viewport from here to here. <coughs> okay, that's how you put viewports onto a piece of paper. I'm going to put some dimensions on, change the correct layer. Up here is how you put linear dimensions on. And on the drop down, there are more options. Aligned, or dimensions going at an angle. Angular, uh, diameter, and radius. The usual ones you would use are on this drop down. Most of them will be linear. Um, the other thing you will be doing is putting notes on, and we'll use a multi -leader. If where we use either of these position dimensions or notes, we should just check what the settings are. So click here. This is your dimension style manager. This is your multi-leader style manager. Well, a quick look at the dimension style manager. And you'll notice that the preview shows that uh, the whole numbers are followed by a comma and then uh, the decimal point numbers. So I'm going to modify this. There's not much to modify. I'm going to leave most of the settings as they are. Select the primary units. I'm going to move it down to no decimal points. This is a building. Um, I could put this to decimal or period if I wanted to as well. Okay, that and close. The other one we're going to use shortly will be the multi-layer. So select that and modify. The size here is coming was four millimeters. Most arrows and tacks for dimensions should be two and a half, so change that to two and a half. Leader structure is our next. It's going to be frozen for some reason. We'll try two. Um, I'm going to put two here and the content. I'll put this two as well. It's okay. Close that down. Okay, how to put dimensions on? Select linear. Zoom in with where you're going to dimension. <coughs> I'm going to have a long line of dimensions along the front here. So I just need to pick two points. I've got end point selected on my object snap. So here to here and then position the text about there. And for the next dimension, I could then select here and here and position the text, dimension text here. Or there's a nice little function found under Annotate. It's called Continue. I will continue on from the previous dimension and put on. I can then simply select all the endpoints along the front of this building and it will dimension it for me. Hit return twice to finish off the command. Don't need to worry about the dimensions sitting on top of the viewports. The viewports won't print at the end of the day. One of the small things that you should remember about dimensioning, if I was dimensioning up here, say, and I put a dimension here, and then I continued on here to here. Let's finish that off. You know, I have a mess around here with all these dimensions. To stop that from happening, select one of the dimensions, say the 500. 
you'll notice it's mentioning from here to here and the text is sitting here so you can again select one of the grips and move the dimension to somewhere else the same with this 325 select the dimension pick the grip and move it over and hit skip. the dimensions are now easier to read and that's important because your drawing at the end of the day should convey all the dimensional data to the construction uh, personnel. Um, to put notes on, you go back to the Home tab and select Multi-Leader Line. Um, for an example, I shall select here, bring the leader line out to the side, select here, and now you can type in what you're looking at, say a roof and hit return to oh, close the text that's how you put on annotation my notes would probably be on a separate layer uh, a text layer so to change objects from one layer to the other um, select them select then which layer it should be on and press escape to finish off the drawing change over to the tax layer fill in your title block correctly you know, select single line text select the first box I want to put some information in it's two and a half millimeters high, rotation is zero drawing number one, two, three, four, five and hit return twice and I would then copy a piece of text from this area to this area to this area to this area to this area and then edit the text um, what would we call this house view return drawn by your name return whatever date it may be etc etc the sheet number should be sheet one and again copy that piece of text from here turn on ortho to there if I only have one sheet in my hold selection to tidy up this entire drawing each of the views should also have a tile again it's just a matter of copying a bit of text turn off ortho from here to here edit the text and view. Again, put another tile down below for the elevation. Front elevation. Return. If you don't want to see the viewports, you can turn them off so they are invisible by selecting this item here. You can see your end result. It's a little tight here. You might want to move this view down a little bit. Uh, 